So uh, in the case of the specialist prosecutor versus Hashim Thachi, Kadri Vaseli, Recep Salimi, and Yakov Krasnichi, the process is now um, uh, that the prosecution is presenting its case, calling its witnesses. Um, the prosecution has said that they intend to call their witnesses until April of 2025. So we're in the middle of that process. 85 witnesses have testified uh, in the courtroom or through a video link, and another 69 have testified um, uh, only in a, in a written form. Um, and so after the prosecution finishes with its case, then the defense will have the opportunity if they wish to seek the dismissal of charges um, and pending any result of that, uh, sometime next year, presumably, the defense would be able to begin calling their witnesses. Um, in the Pietrashala case, we recently had the second war crimes judgment. Pietrashala was convicted of the war crimes of arbitrary detention, torture, and murder, and sentenced to 18 years of imprisonment. Uh, he is appealing that, and on Friday there is an initial uh, appeals uh, conference uh, being held to discuss some preliminary matters. Um, in another case against Mr. Yanuzi Batyari and Haji Shala, um, that case has moved now to the trial phase. That involves allegations um, that a witness was intimidated in order to prevent them from testifying before the specialist chambers. Yeah, so, so basically uh, one of the jobs of the trial panel is, of, of course, the main, the main uh, job is to make sure that the, the proceedings are, are fair and expeditious. And so that involves um, basically asking the parties to give timelines when they expect to, to how long they expect to, to do certain things. And so the prosecution said it needs until April 2025. And the judges are um, really overseeing the process to try and make sure that, 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 that the trial is expeditious. And they're asking the prosecution to streamline its case wherever possible. As you said, um, they have now a number of times announced reductions in their number of witnesses. Sure, Mr. Shala was, uh, was convicted, as I mentioned, of arbitrary detention, um, torture, and murder uh, in regards to events that took place in the Cook's metal factory in northern Albania mm -hmm. that was used as a detention center for um, persons who were perceived of as uh, opposing the KLA, including um, Albanians um, and and Serbs, and uh, Mr. Shala specifically was convicted um, for his uh, participation in, uh, in the torture um, and arbitrary detention that took, that took place there. That's the first instance verdict, and so um, he, he is appealing uh, that verdict, and um, we'll see how it develops. Yeah, so I think overall the, the focus is, um, I think it's important pe for people to understand that, you know, the authorities created um, the specialist chambers to deal with um, certain uh, alleged crimes that fall within the jurisdiction um, as part of Kosovo's overall system of accountability and rule of law. So the way it works is the prosecution um, brings charges against someone for war crimes or crimes against humanity or witness interference. Um, and then the judges, their focus is on providing fair and impartial uh, trials. So that doesn't necessarily mean convictions, it doesn't mean acquittals, it means that the judges will uh, listen to the evidence that's presented by the parties, they're going to apply the law, and they're, they're going to make sure um, that they reach a fair outcome. And, and we saw recently in the case of Salim Mustafa, that the court system, just like other courts here in Kosovo, there's a system of checks and balances, whereby, for example, in the Salim Mustafa case, the trial panel imposed a sentence of 26 years imprisonment. Uh, then the appeals uh, chamber said, no, this sentence is not comparable to sentences by other tribunals for similar crimes. They lowered the sentence to 22 years. Then Mr. Mustafa um, appealed to the specialist chamber's Supreme Court, um, and they found that the appeals chamber had skipped a step in reaching their verdict, that they needed to consider the most lenient uh, sentence uh, uh, relevant to the case in Kosovo law. Uh, the appeals chamber went back, and now they've lowered, um, or they've issued a new sentence for Mr. Mustafa of, of 15 years. So I think it's, it's really important to highlight that 
Judges are there to take the cases that come from the prosecution, to provide fair uh, trials, and if someone feels that their rights have been violated or a wrong decision was reached, other judges will review that case.